Hello guys and welcome to another calculus video. Today we're going to be solving this generalized integral which as many of you can probably tell is very easily solved using Feynman's trick. So we're going to go ahead and solve that and then at the end we're going to go over uh, a very useful strategy for evaluating integrals that are similar to this integral. Not this integral actually can't, uh, this integral actually can't be evaluated by that strategy but there are lots of other integrals that we can definitely uh, solve using this strategy. So let's go ahead and jump into the video. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to define an integral function i of a and b as our integral, which is the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x to the a minus e to the negative x to the b all over x dx. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take um, i sub a, which basically means the partial derivative of i with respect to a, and that's pretty easy to calculate. We're just going to end up with the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x to the a over x. The e to the negative x to the b just disappears, and then we're going to multiply by negative x to the a, and then by ln x, because that's the derivative of uh, x to the a dx, right? And then we are going to now uh, substitute. First, let's go ahead and bring this negative sign to the outside. And let's take this x and we'll put it on the inside here. And now we have a pretty easy way to substitute x to the a equals u. Then a x to the a minus 1 equals du, or sorry, dx equals du. And so if we just multiply by a here and then divide on the outside, then this combined with this will be du. So now we can write that i sub a is equal to negative 1 over a integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative u ln, then uh, x is just u to the 1 over a, du. Then we'll use properties of natural logs to bring this 1 over a all the way outside. So we'll end up with 1 over a squared. And now this integral is only in terms of u. This is a pretty common integral that we've uh, used in the past, and it's famously equal to negative gamma, where gamma is the euler mascheroni constant. And so we're going to end up with i sub a is equal to gamma over a squared. All right, now that we've used Feynman trick, we're now going to integrate back. So we're going to integrate both sides with respect to a. I'll write it out as di over da, da. Now on the left side, we're just going to end up with i again. We can write it as i of a of b. I'm just going to leave it as i right now. And then this is going to be equal to negative gamma over a plus c, right? But the thing that we have to take into consideration here is that this constant is actually not just a constant because when we're integrating with respect to a, b is actually treated as a constant as well. So this constant could also be a function of b depending on where we are in uh, our variable plane. So I'm going to write this as c of b, where c is some function. Now we're going to take the simple fact that if we take i of, um, instead of using a and b, I'll use uh, x and x. Actually, that's a really terrible letter to use, i of um, y comma y. This is going to be equal to zero because both of these terms in the numerator will be the same. And so it'll be zero throughout the entire domain of integration. So we can write that i of y comma y equals negative gamma over y plus c of y, right? And this is equal to zero. And so this tells us that c of y is actually gamma over y which means that since we're not looking for c of y, we're looking for c of b, we can just replace the y right here. 
And so overall, our integral is going to be i of a comma b equals negative gamma over a plus gamma over b. And that's our answer. Now let's see how we can apply this to a few different problems and then um, also look at another strategy that we can use to evaluate integrals similar to this one. So we're actually going to use this to evaluate a viewer suggested integral that's basically of the same form. Uh, so I'll put the comment up here and if we quickly write out the problem we will realize that integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x to the 4 minus e to the negative x to the third plus e to the negative x squared uh, minus e to the negative x all over x dx is actually just equal to i of 4 comma 3 plus i of 2 comma 1. And so if we just plug this in, we will get negative gamma over 4 plus gamma over 3 minus gamma over 2 plus gamma, right? So this right here will just simplify to positive gamma over 2. And this side will simplify to gamma over 12. And so overall, we'll end up with 7 gamma over 12. All right. Now we're going to discuss Frulani's integral, which is a really cool integral theorem that can be used for a lot of different integrals. So if we ever have an integral of the form, the integral from 0 to infinity of f of ax minus f of bx all over x dx, we can solve it pretty simple, simply using almost the exact same strategy we just did. So this is equal to i of a and b again. So if we take i sub a, we will get the integral from 0 to infinity of f prime of ax. And that's just because um, when we differentiate with respect to a, an x comes out and this last term disappears, dx. And so when we integrate this with respect to x, we will end up with um, 1 over a f of ax, right? Evaluated at z infinity and at 0. And so assuming, of course, a b greater than 0, then we can just write this as f of infinity minus f of 0, right? And then if we integrate this with respect to a, then we'll get i is equal to ln a times f of infinity minus f of 0 plus some function of b, right? And just by inspection, since we know that this has to be 0 when uh, a is equal to b, we know that we're just going to be subtracting this exact same thing. So we could go through the process of actually solving for it, but we know that this is going to be ln b times f of infinity minus f of 0. And so we can just rewrite this whole thing as ln a over b f of infinity minus f of 0. So this is called Frulani's integral. And um, it's, it's something that you see used all over the place. In general, we'll just go through the derivation of it again because we don't recognize that it's a form of Frulani's integral. But if you want to really quickly be able to solve something and just already recognize that this function is something for which we can use this, I would definitely um, consider doing that because I think it's a great strategy. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.